Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again in another one of these table making tutorial videos. I hope you're all enjoying them. Uh, in this one we're going to be painting and distressing the base of the farm table. This is the same base that you saw get assembled in the end of the video where I made these legs using the bandsaw. And these are 2x6s that have been laminated up and then sawn down to 4 inches and then tapered on the bandsaw. So during the milling process of 2x6s, they're not perfectly flat on their faces. So what I do in the case of these tables, if I was to use 2x6s, most of the time I use a solid 4x4, just a, a, a true dimension rough sawn 4x4. But in this case, I want to demonstrate making these legs with material that you can easily just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or a similar store and buy. So you end up with some little voids along the glue line. So you just want to fill those in if you want to. You don't have to. But um, this is a table that's going out to a customer, so I don't want to leave those lines. And uh, so I'm just going to fill those in. And for that, I just use a water-based wood filler. It dries fairly quick. So I'm just going to go right down those cracks and fill that in and then remove the excess from that joint. The other thing that I do, and I've already done this, it's easiest to do this before you even assemble the table, but you don't have to, is I'll go over all the corners of the legs with my hand plane. And by that I just mean knock off that that sharp edge. And, and it can just be freehand, you don't have to be real careful with it. Uh, sometimes when things are a little more wonky, it, it kind of looks nice on this style of table. The other thing I'll do is I want to add a little bit of texture to the side of the apron boards. It's not going to exactly look like a rough sawn board, but it's going to give it some sort of a texture that will kind of connect in people's heads. Um, so all I do for doing that, I'll demonstrate it right here, is I just hold the plane at, doesn't really matter the exact angle, but just hold it at an angle, and then I'll just start making passes like that, and it's just going to put this diagonal score marks all along the apron boards, and that's just going to give it a nice look once it's distressed. Those little ridges that you create will show up through, and it just makes a plain apron just have a little bit of character, and you can do this as much or as little as you want. And I did a video on doing that process. Of course, that's about all the demonstration you need, but if you'd like to see that video, I'll try to remember to put that link in the description below. But I'll just go walk around the whole table doing that um, to the apron board. The last thing I do with the hand plane is go around underneath the apron boards and knock off that sharp edge inside and out. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this stuff to the table now and come back and paint it in a couple minutes. Here's a quick detail of those planer marks in the apron boards. They go down um, both the ends and the sides of the table and then of course the little small chamfers I plane onto the sides of the legs and on the underside of the apron. And all that, like I said, is just quick rough work. You don't need to be careful. You just get that done. Um, kind of the less careful you are, the better it's going to look in the end. When it comes to paint, I use the cheapest flat wall paint that I can find. Normally that's about $10 uh, per gallon at Lowe's or Home Depot. This table obviously is being painted black. And for that, I just use a brush or either a roller. Roller is usually pretty quick. You can go around, hit all the flat surfaces, and then go back in with your brush and hit those areas that the roller can't get. Um, I buy my brushes from the Dollar Tree, so they're only a dollar each. They're three-inch brushes, but they come with wooden handles, and I like them. They last a pretty long time, and when they get worn out, I just toss them out and get another one. I have a bunch of these. I usually buy 10 or 15 at a time and have them on hand. So for applying the paint, you don't have to be careful. This whole process is pretty much just uh, get each step done, and then in the very end when you do the distressing and putting the finish on there, that's when it all ties together and looks nice. So just get the paint on any way you can, and then let it dry. When it comes to doing the distressing on my bases, I keep things really simple and just use an orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper. In some cases, I'll use a lower grit sandpaper like 120 grit if I want to remove a little bit more paint or if I'm using a lighter color that doesn't contrast the wood quite as much. But in general, when I'm doing these types of table bases, most all of them are orders. Some of them I stick in stores, but the majority of all the tables I make are, are custom orders where the customer is contacting me directly based off of seeing a table in a store and a picture on, um, online or in an ad. And so they have something in their head that they're expecting. So I need to uh, create really consistent results from table to table, so I kind of have to keep things simple. But you can go as far with this as you want, but for me, I just use that orbital sander. So all I do is, with the sandpaper on there, I'm kind of pretending I'm doing it here, 
I just run over the whole surface. Of course, you're going to want to hit all the flats, and then you're going to hit the corners. When you're doing your distressing, you can kind of think about what surfaces and which edges would naturally get distressed and then focus on them. The final step in this process is just as easy as all the rest, and that's applying the clear coat. For my table bases and the tops, I use a Minwax Polycrylic in satin. I buy it at Home Depot, and it's around $50 a gallon. It's not the cheapest finish, but I like it for its quick dry time and the fact that it's water-based. Um, on the bases, I only apply one coat of finish, unlike the top where I apply two or three, but the bases, like I said, only get one to avoid sort of a thick-looking finish. Um, so there really is nothing to this step, just give it one coat of finish and let it dry. Well, thank you all for watching the video today. I enjoyed putting it together for you. And I've got a few things for you to click. If you're not already a subscriber, click the red button, and that will let you see when I post future videos. If you'd like to see me build a 10-foot long farm table, click the video on the left. And if you'd like to see a trestle table get built, click the video on the right. And that project has plans as well. Well, that's all, and thanks for watching.